Well, good morning. My name is Rachel Khoury. Uh, it's April 19th, 2003, and I'm here with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. Uh, we're here for the Tidewater Main Street Project. Uh, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to today? Linda Sharp. Linda Sharp. And I'm also here with Julia Cross. Um, so can you tell me when and where you were born? I was born 1949 in Brooklyn, New York, at Beth Israel Hospital. And then, um, uh, can you give me like the date maybe of when? The November the 12th, 1949. 1949, uh -huh. okay, awesome. Um, where were, what were your parents' names and their occupations? My mother, uh, her name was Anna Lee and everything. And she worked on the train. My father was a musician hmm. and everything, but I have never met him and everything. My mother died when I was born, and I was brought to Middlesex County, Virginia, as a child, and everything. Okay. Um, where did your family live, or where did you stay with? I, we stayed on, on Route 17 in Jamaica, Virginia. Gotcha. But my family was from Neston and from the Dragon family members. My mother's family, they were from Neston, mm -hmm. and my father's family, they were from the Dragon. It's called Dragon Run now. Cool. Um, when did you attend St. Clair Walker High School and for what grades? I didn't go to St. Clair Walker High School. I left here with time for me to go to school and I went to school in New Jersey. New Jersey? Uh huh. Okay. Um, so can you give me kind of the time frame? So you came here when you were. Um... I, was, I came here at, um, I was three weeks old. Okay. Uh -huh. And I was back and forth in and out of here the whole time. And when time for me to go to school, mm -hmm. I went to Jersey and everything. I started school in Elizabeth and I finished school in Plainfield High School and everything. But I was here during the summertime all summer long. And when my cousins and them went to school, because our school was later, I went to school with them. And then it was time for me to go to go to school. They came and got me, and they took me back to Jersey. And I mean, gotcha. Um, did you have any other family members that attended St. Clair uh, Walker High School? My whole family attended St. Clair Walker High School. Okay. And All my cousins. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to mention their names and when they went, or? Well, um, you have Anna Mae here and Anna D. They went to St. Clair Walker. They're ready for their 60th class reunion. Nice. Um, Mabel South and everything. She was a, like a mother to me and everything. She graduated from St. Clair Walker High School. She probably been out of school maybe about 80 years now and everything. My uh, complete whole family went there and everything. George Miller, Rittenhouse. I mean, they all went to St. Clair Walker. All my aunts and everything, they went to St. Clair Walker High School. I mean, nice. Um, they, it wasn't called St. Clair at the time, Walker, when they went there. It was called Serena. Okay. When they went there. And then it was changed into um, Mr. Walker and everything to St. Clair Walker High. So what high school did you attend? I went to Plainfield High School. And I'm going through, this year will be my 55th year. We're having our anniversary there. And I spoke to Harella Stringer. She's from Hartville, and she's down living in Atlanta. She's going. I spoke to a couple of other girls and everything. They live down the county. They were from down the county. They graduated with me. They live up in Arlington now. And they will be, we will all be trying to get back to Plainfield and everything. That's amazing. Um... What were conversations about school like at home? School was important to us, very, very important, to especially being black African-American and everything. We needed a high school education to get any type of job and everything. So from the beginning, they always kept us with books. I still carry books now that I read, you know, wherever I go. We, I had a comic book, 
And if I'm not reading my little comic book, I'm acting up, she take the book and pop me on top of the head and give it back to me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> school is very was very important to us. How did you get to school? Well, I walked to school. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, was it far from your from your home? I can say yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, did you have any teachers that impacted your experience at high school, um, and what years were the were were you in those classes? I had a couple and everything that you know. Well, I was m mostly in math and science classes and everything. So, my math teachers they really you know, English was not my first language and everything. On my father's side, they were uh, Geechees. On my mother's side, they come from <laughs> Virginia and the two languages that came together and everything. So um, the math was my subject and everything. Um, were there any particular teachers that you recall or just your math teachers that you remember? Well, I had a lot of smart people at home very, very smart people and everything. They were very educated and everything. Yes. Uh, what sort of role models or mentors did you have in school? Or maybe you're mentioning now your home as well. Mm -hmm. Mentors and role models that you can recall that really influenced you? The library was my role model <laughs> and everything. It was, you know, not an individual. It was the books in the library. Mm. And what library did you usually go to? I went to, um, when I went to Plainfield High School, I went to the library in Plainfield. And Elizabeth, I went to the library. I had a library card all my life and everything. Yes. Uh, what memories from class, uh, lessons, celebrations, examinations stick out to you from your, from your time in school? From in school, mm. It's been so long from being in school and everything. It was just there trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> it was just being there trying to get out and everything. I had Mr. Thompson. Um, he was my uh, class advisor and everything. And, and he was my English teacher. Uh, what do you remember about lunchtime, the food, the cafeteria, and workers, and employees? Well, I remember we could go out and eat. Outside? Outside and eat and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe your experiences with May Day and special events? When they did the Mul Mulberry? May Day and I had, that was in, that was like between first and fifth grade and everything and we wrapped it. it was cray paper and everybody went around and, and we wrapped it and everything. I don't even think they do that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any uh, assemblies or extracurricular activities that you were involved with? I belong to the library club. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, do you, what were some of your biggest accomplishments in and out of school or any tough times? I guess they all are still alive. They all were accomplishments and everything. Mm -hmm. There was no, you know, you live day by day and everything. The biggest accomplishments that I made, we fought through during that time, it was the 60s and everything. We made sure that everybody was registered to vote. That was one of our big accomplishments in the 60s. Then we fought for uh, abortion rights. That was another one. And everything. And just little things and everything. Helping people understand that education is very important. That school is very, very important and everything, especially for a black child and everything. And that's about it.
Can you expand a little bit more about uh, voting rights and your like capacity of in involvement there? And okay, during that time when I was coming up and everything, black people weren't allowed to vote and everything. They didn't want them to register and everything. So we went out and registered people to vote. And most of the our older people were afraid because it was always something, you know, they were afraid they'd lose their jobs or something and everything. We had no jobs. We had no fear at that time and everything. And we were ready to fight for our rights and everything. So we went from house to house. And you told me you you were registered. I can go back to downtown and look, you know, and everything. And I tell, I'll be back tomorrow. So tell me the truth, you know. And we registered people. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, hmm. Was your school segregated, or do you have any recollection of segregation or integration? I went to um, the first elementary school I went to, it was segregated. And um, my junior high school, it was black children and Italian children. Italian? Uh-huh. And in my um, first year, second year, I went to an all-white school. There was only five of us in the whole school, five black children in the whole school. And I went there for two years until I moved to Plainfield. And this school was actually, um, it was amazing and everything. I had a tutor when I was in, in school. I wasn't able to play hooky anymore because they would call the house. <laughs> and he had to say, we called me about her homework and everything. Well, she's supposed to be in school. <laughs> and when I come home, everybody's sitting there how was school? So I know I was caught then. <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, oh, hi, I'm Julia Krause on the mic right now. Mm -hmm. um, so when you did like the voting organizing, was that here in um, town? No, that was in Jersey. That was in Jersey. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was so Jersey. there was limited like voting rights in Jersey too. Yes, everywhere. All right, this is Adolfo speaking. I have a question. So when you were gathering the community to go out there, register the vote, were you, did you ever face any hostility from like the white people or how was it? How was that experience doing that? Were you scared of knocking that at doors and how did you approach that going? How, how was that? Well, they gave me a list and okay. everything. I have an older brother that he was like an organizer. <laughs> And I really, and I had a list and went to house to house and else. He went down to find out who didn't vote, who was not registered. And I, we went by that list and everything. Okay, uh, question. Where does this come from, this energy to mobilize yourself? Was it your parents, uh, your family that drove you to become this activist? Your brother, it seems like it, this is in the family, like the family is mobilizing people. It was people. a family thing. It was a family thing. And I, my family were very active in civil rights and I mean, doing the mirrors and everything. Because uh, when I was coming up, you weren't, a, when you come through the South, you couldn't go to certain bathrooms. You couldn't eat at certain places and everything. Marshall's Drugstore, you weren't allowed to sit at their counter when I was growing up and everything. When I came here as a child and everything, well, there was, this was, in, Middlesex County was 95% black. My people, they had their own boats, their homes and everything. And we didn't, we were happy the way we were and everything. Oliver Lewis, he was my cousin. He had his own place. George Young Place, that was my uncle. He had, they had their own place. Black people had their own and everything. Uh, where does, uh, I kind of wanted to know a little bit about your family's ancestry. Like, where did they come from? Like, uh, where do they originate? Like, from Virginia area? How did they migrate here they, or travel uh, down to My people here? are from Virginia. Virginia. My mother's people are from Virginia. My, um, Grandmother, she was a, a Tucker and a Lewis, and they were from right here in Middlesex County, and their name. My grandfather, my great grandfather, he was from King and Queen, Virginia. He, my great great grandmother, they were slaves. I am the second generation out of slavery, and their name. They, um, both of them, my great grandmother. And my grandmother, they were free like when they were about 10, 12 years old. 
was there any organization specifically that you were involved with or just the community on their own um, with, like took initiative? Not really. Well, we, the Urban League Guild, my mother was part of that and everything. Urban and League? Urban League Guild and, and the NACP, they were part of that and everything. What do you remember about hearing news about um, integration nationally and in the state? Well, Virginia was the last one that integrated. Okay. Virginia, right here in Virginia, most states went on and integrated, but Virginia was the last one that integrated and everything. Did you have any personal experiences um, with segregation? So you were mentioning like you weren't able to sense your encounters. Um, did you have any specific memories? of? Yes, I traveled to Savannah, Georgia. I had a grandmother that lived in Savannah and they put us on the bus and everything, we go to Savannah and everything. And we had one place where white people had to eat and drink in a bathroom, and we had our own bathroom where we had to eat and drink for our bathroom. I have, uh huh, when I was growing up. Um, in what way did your experiences? Um at your high school affect your life socially, educationally, civilly, following your graduation? Well, during that time, everybody wanted to grow up and get out and everything. So you studied, you know, if you, you found out you were failing, you kept on studying so you can get out of there and everything. Um, but um, we knew it was there and we knew how to deal with it. We knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I pay taxes, but I can't do this. I pay taxes, but I can't do that and everything. So growing up, we knew that we had to fix it. What, what did you do after graduating uh, high school? Did you continue any education or what occupations did you hold? Oh, I went to, um, I had pretty good jobs. And then we, during that time, they taught you Computers were taught to you. You didn't have to go to school for that and everything. But I did go to college and everything. What At that time, they sent you to school for look for a husband. And everything. So. What college did you go to? I went to Union County and Rutgers. Rutgers. Uh huh. How was your experience there? It was good. It was really good and everything. Did you face any um, discrimination while you were there, or you felt very comfortable? Doing, um, growing up, you feel discrimination as far as a black, especially a black woman, mostly anything, because they think that we're angry and everything, because we fight for our rights, you know. Uh, what was your occupation after you finished school? Well, I didn't really active. I worked for a uh, microstate. I worked for uh, Exxon. And the final job and everything that where the whole family works with, with General Motors. General Motors. Uh -huh. It was like a slot for me, and that's where I was going, <laughs> no matter what I did. And then mostly, there was 25 of us in there. Mother and daddy and everybody else, you know. If I didn't want to do something for me, go tell my mama. Oh, she didn't come to work today. Mama gets on the phone and calls me. You don't sound sick, so come in, you know. And I, I did that till I retired. And I, General Motors sent me back to school for different courses and things like that. I went to school. Most people came out of General Motors with a master's degree, and we worked because <laughs> we got to school for free. Now, was that in Plainfield? That was in uh, Jersey. Jersey. Uh huh. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, this might be skipping ahead, but I'm curious. So you were you spent your whole life in Jersey until you retired. Um, is there something that brought you back here? Okay. I um, when COVID came and everything, I got in my um, I'm in my seventies now and everything. I only been back here two 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 and a half years and everything. I decided to come back and everything because my whole family had came back. Mm. My, all my family's back here. And 
Plus, I was living in a house. I had 14 steps. I couldn't get up and down no more. <laughs> so I just decided to make the move back and everything. And when I did and everything, I had a, they didn't want me back on my own land. I had to fight down the county to get, get back on my land and everything. They said the land didn't perk. This was wrong with the land. That was wrong with the land. I had a well on the land. Come on, give me a break. And I, I had too much property, you know, and I, the more, I got more discriminated here than any place else. And I, and the land that you're referring to, is that um, your family? My family owned this land for many, many years. It's from, we have like a family complex. It's all of us back there on this land and everything. And we sell to each other. You cannot oversell to anyone else and everything. Mm -hmm. I had to have me split the land up, do this with the land, everything with the land and everything. But I had brought enough money to, because I knew what was going on, because they disencouraged. Black people's land here don't perk. White people's land, you sell it, to, it perks. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They did, right here, it's more discriminate here than ever. I've lived in California, I've lived in Alabama, I've lived in many different places and everything. My job has transferred me out behind my mouth. And I, but here is the, you know. What do you think that is? Why Virginia, why this area? Why is it more different than other, even Alabama you're mentioning, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, what, very, why they, is it? We believe it's selective. They don't want the people back here. And okay. everything. This this county here and everything. Okay, I, uh, I wanted to go to the point. So now going back a little bit to uh, segregation and desegregation, do you think it seems like you, from what you were mentioning earlier that the community was striving uh, before uh, desegregation? Mm -hmm. So do you think the outcome of desegregation? Uh, I am somewhat benefited, but at the same time, did the community lost anything because of that desegregation? And if so, what did they lose? Well, here, we're talking about Middlesex yes. County. Okay. Right here, there's no industry. There's nothing for them to do. You have to leave to find somewhere else to go. Most people work at the shipyard or they have to go to Richmond to work. They haven't brought no industry in here. They're losing businesses here and everything. Have you seen the uh, younger generation stay here or had to go to school here and then head over somewhere they else? Leave. Or what, they leave? They leave. The younger generation leaves. So you mentioned like during COVID, your family coming back. Is that like a trend? Like is that your, your generation of family coming back here? Well, um, they're older than me, but they all came, they came back, a lot of them came back 20 years ago, 10 years ago. After you retired, they came back mm -hmm. and they remain. Oh, so do you, is it like people want to be home like once they're able to retire, but you have to go somewhere else to work? Yes. Uh -huh. You mentioned earlier that um, your communities um, owned their own businesses and were very self-sufficient. Can you describe that time that what you recall before people would leave and okay, um, I have um, Oliver Lewis. He had his own business. He was my um, great grandmother. They were first cousins. It's right on 17. Now it's um, turned over to the, I think, septic tank people. They just bought it and everything. That was one of the black businesses they had here. They had all kinds of things for um, people to do here and everything. They had, um, we had our churches. It was always something to do. They had Cook's Corner. We'd go to the baseball game. Many things to do. And black people did it and everything. Once you got older and once you graduated from high school, there was no, you had to go away to go to school or work because there was nowhere to work here. Um, what, are you, what are your earliest memories of Cook's Corner or of hearing of Cook's Corner? As a little small child, the baseball games they used to take me to. Mm -hmm. uh, what businesses do you remember there? Well, I was traveling with family, so we just went to the baseball game, or that's about it, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, do you re recall businesses changing over time or just how, how do you recall the transition of that no longer being the case of these businesses being owned by black folks? Well, mostly when people die, they had no one to take over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Notice that. Um, do you remember Herman's? Herman Wakes? Herman Wakes. Probably. Yeah, Herman Wakes. We used to go there to dance and everything. I used to, used to put a little thing on your hand, a stamp and everything, and you didn't want to wash it off. <laughs> <laughs> but we would go there to party. It was a gathering and everything a lot. Uh huh. Did, uh, was it live music or did you all, um, how, how did, what kind of music were you guys? They had to? live music. And live music. music. They had live music, they had food. Can you explain a little, uh, what did that mean to the community, having that specific place to hang out, be part of, you know, together, and uh, what did it mean to all of you? That meant a good time. We you know you're going to have a good time there. Do, can you tell us a story, maybe, of one of those amazing stories that I'm sure happened? Oh, uh, we used to go there, and uh, they had the jammer jammers. You would come and play. We'd go there and dance and have a good time, you know, eat. Would you stay there all night, or do you have, like, curfew? Do you have to you be back home? You had a curfew home? when you had to be home. You know, you'd be home about 12, 1 o'clock at night. But you had, to go to the, you had to go to church in the morning. Okay. Uh -huh. and, uh, no matter what you did, <laughs> Saturday night you had to go to church. They had a place called Mary Francis here, and people would gather there and have a good time. And a lot of people would go from house to house. They played cards. Did you ever use that place to mobilize yourselves to sort of discuss any political issues or like, um, you know, just on that end? No, no. No, it was just for... It was just for fun. <laughs> for fun. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Did you have any like favorite dances or music, types of music or songs from that time? Oh, I just like music. All music and everything. All music. Uh, do you remember Mr. Butler Harris's outdoor movie? That was the uh, drive-in movie. I believe so. I was I was a bell. You see, I think I was about five, six, seven, eight years old during that time. My uh, Nana would um, get us dressed and take us there to it. And I mean, I very remember a little bit about it. I remember where it was at. You know, sometimes I pass by, and it was on Route 17 also. And, I mean, uh, yeah. and you recall a lot of the baseball field um, was that uh, who was playing on that baseball field and what do you recall from those memories there I remember going to Oliver Loose to they play baseball at Oliver Loose they played baseball at Cook Corner and everything and I was young and everything the kids we would run around and have fun and everything while everybody we never watched the game I never knew who won and everything <laughs> We'd meet our cousins and all them, and we'd have so much fun, you know, together and everything. And was the baseball team from the high school, or was it just a rec recreational, anyone could join? The baseball team, you come from different states, different counties would come and play together. And everything. They would come from all over. I remember my uncle used to call the game. Um... Did you ever go, or do you remember anything about Miss Frances Jackson's ice cream parlor? No, I don't remember. I've heard of that, but I don't remember. Uh -uh. We made homemade ice cream. We had homemade ice cream. <laughs> or then if we really, Olive Lou sold ice cream. Jack Gaines sold the best ice cream in the world. And, um, but we didn't get ice cream like we got it once in a while. We didn't have um, candy, no sodas. We drank water and we drank, we ate out the woods. When we were outside, we played outside all day long and our food was from the woods. You can't find that anymore. They done sprayed, they done killed everything around. And it's bad for people's health now and everything. Mm. Um, do you remember Mr. Lynn Davis's uh, restaurant or Duke joint? I know who Lynn Davis is, Mr. Lynn Davis is, and everything. 
but I don't remember that. And I re but I I know who he is. Yeah. Um, what do you remember about other Cook's Corner establishments through your own experiences or other people's experiences? I remember only about the um, coming to watch baseball games. That's about it in the arena. And you said you come in the summer, so just like a month or two, or how long? No, I came as soon as school was out. As soon as school was out? As soon as school was out. I was here the whole summer. Mm -hmm. Who did you stay with? I stayed with my Aunt Maud. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any other recollections of this county in general um, that, you, that stand out to you that you think is important to know about? Doing, uh, you're talking about doing that time. Yeah, anything, anything, anything? you want to uh -huh. recall? Anything? Well, I remember um, it was family, big families, a lot of families, and uh, a lot of love. We had a lot of love here and everything, and we were taught friendship, respect, honor. And we were taught how to fight our way out of something, but no matter what it was. We had to stand up for our rights and everything. Uh, my people here, my Uncle Enos, he built a lot of houses here. We had, they worked in the water. They did, you know, we were never hungry. And um, I was to watch people work. How, um, important and what was the influences of the black churches around here um, on just uh, community and when it comes to also like organizing um, what was the influence of the black church well most black churches here they organized and everything because they had to keep going and everything but why the people had to move out and people got sick and everything they had an ACP here ever since I was a little girl and everything they had um, I remember I can't think of her name right now. This is when you get in the 70s, you know, and everything. She got, um, we celebrated her for many, many years and everything. She was way before Rosa Parker and everything. And she was coming from Gloucester. They locked her up in Saluda and we were taught about her and everything. I had her name written out because I was supposed to take it to the library over here and everything. I can't think of her name right now. When I get back in my car, it didn't pop out <laughs> and everything. But um, not too, a couple of years back, maybe about when uh, President Obama, he honored her and everything, because she was one of the first black women. They locked up because she didn't want to give her a seat up on the bus. In Virginia? In Virginia here, right here in Saluda, wow. uh -huh, in this county. Um, do you recall any um, prominent figures that's come out of Saluda? I know you mentioned um, her and the NAACP. Any other um, recollections of organizations or important people that you can recall? Okay, um, Middlesex County. They, well, Chambers was actually born here. They don't put that in record, but he was born here. His family is here, the Chamberlains and everything. And they have a couple of people that wrote books that are from here. And they had um, Estelle, she's a Smith, but she was an Amy and everything. She was with, um, when they had the space program down in Langley, she was one of the women from, um, they have it, um, they made the movie out of, she was one of the women. Hidden figures? Uh-huh, uh -huh, hidden figures and everything. She wasn't the main character, but she was one of the computers and everything. There's a lot of people that came out of here that had a lot going for them. Can you talk a little bit more about um, folks who worked on the water and their experiences there? Well, um, my grandfather, he oystered and everything. A lot of them oystered. They have a lot of people here still work on the water and they take, they take people out for boats, you know, for fishing trips and everything. And a lot of people did a lot of oystering until the water got polluted and everything. How has that affected? Um... It has affected a lot and everything. We have the Oyster Queen. She's from here. Who's that? Deborah Pratt. Okay. 
She's from here. And not too long ago, the governor called her up about the water. <laughs> why, is, why is the water polluted? How did that happen? And when did it start happening when you notice? It seems like it wasn't at one point. We noticed this. Um, they had cleaned it up real good and everything. And when um, Trump got in office, he let them dump back in the water again. And that's what, you know, we're not able to get fish like... People call me all up North South Carolina. Did fish come in yet? The fish, the fish are coming in like this little baby fish and everything. Uh, um, who who led the effort to clean the Chesapeake or the water that's around here? Do you know? I don't know, but they had a big effort behind it and everything. They kept it. Um, they worked on it for years to keep it clean. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. For the oysters and stuff, they worked on it big time. And everything. because when I was the, they had um, dead fish all around. We wonder what's going on. So they start cleaning it up and cleaning it up. And fish were plenty. You could get a lot of fish here. And now not no more. Wow. Uh -uh. My cousin, he caught some fish and brought it out about this big. I told him I called the game warning on it. <laughs> <laughs> and the folks working out on the water, um, your family, were they their own bosses or did they work for other folks? Or They were their own bosses. Okay. Uh -huh. Their own bosses. Nice. They had their own boats. And they can they still do or they, they're, they're no longer here? Well, they're, they have passed away, but uh, there's a lot of them that have their own boats here and they work. They take out fishing trips, you know. And what's the culture around that? How does that, how does um, working on the water influence, you feel like, the town and your family? Well, um, when, it's, uh, fish, when it's fishing time, you can't get them to do nothing. When it's hunting <laughs> season, you can't get them to do nothing. <laughs> okay. One of the things that, you know, with oral history, what I try to do, always cover like the back, the, the background, which means uh, get back to the foundation, family lineage, where it all began. I know you mentioned a little bit on your second generation moving away from slavery. You know, it's very, from what I've noticed, it's at times difficult to even have a discourse because parents wouldn't pass down what happened during that time frame because it's somehow like an omission of that past. Did you hear your parents tell you stories about that past? And if so, could do you mind sharing some information? Yes, they did. And everything. When I was born and everything, they brought me to uh, Saluda and showed me the tree that they had hung my great uncle on and everything. What's his name? His name was Lindsey Bagby oh. Jr. And everything. And we're trying to find the information about it and everything. They have. We got a death certificate. On the death certificate, he had pneumonia. He had no pneumonia. They found him in the bushes. That was from family history, from story to story and everything. What other stories do you remember? And was this in, this was in Virginia and this, well, in Saluda? This was right here right. in Virginia, right here at Saluda, right here at the courthouse. Were there plantations nearby uh, back in the day where they used to work, your great-grandparents? There were plantations here, but they didn't work at plantations. Okay. In the okay. Okay. Um, all right. No, but I guess that's all. My, um, mm -hmm. my great-grandfather and them, they worked in the water. Almost of them worked in the water and everything, and they farmed. Okay, and uh -huh. they they pass those skill sets to their kids afterwards. It uh -huh. seems but they most of the kids fun. they left and they went to Baltimore and everything because there's no there's really nothing here, you know, but the farm. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a farmer or you want to work in the water and everything. Okay, uh, just a last question on my end. Uh, during uh, slavery times, is there any underground railroad around here? How did your great grandparents uh, seek freedom? Like, were they freedom seekers, or did it just once it became abolished? Um, once they came abolished, and everything, because my great grandfather, um, he was sold to Texas. And when I was in, I was in Georgia. I met this gentleman. Um, a friend of mine was going with him, and he reminded me so much of my family. And every, and his last name was Bagby. And he was from Texas and everything. Uh-huh. Wow. 
how does it make you feel knowing this information? Like, do you feel a little bit more grounded, rooted uh, by knowing your past history? Have you taken ownership oh, yes. of that? And everything. I, um, on one side, my grandfather and my grandmother, she was Indian. What, do you know what tribe? She came from the Pamunkey. Pamunkey. Uh, uh -huh. Is that in Virginia? That's in Virginia. They were, um, one time they were one tribe and they split. The Pamunkeys and the, the Manipalais, they split, and I mean, they all in West Point and um, King Williams, and that's the tribe that she came from. But that's the only thing. When they wrote, uh, they only put the father's name down when you're born, not the mother's name. Mm -hmm. And the record books down at the count at the courthouse, when you go down to look up your family history and everything. <laughs> like mama didn't mean anything. <laughs> it was just daddy and everything. Have you <laughs> traced your going back to that? Have you claimed that um, that uh, group tribe into your own personal identity? Have you done your research? I have and never claimed it and everything. I've you know I've been told about it and everything because I've had uh, the test done, and on the test they have Asian. So the Asian is the Indian. When I get sick, every time I get sick with something, it's, why is it always Asian people here on this book? And that, that was the American Indian and everything. Um, um, besides, we talked a lot about voting rights, but uh, you talked about uh, access to abortion. Can you talk about that movement? Oh yeah, that movement was very important to me and everything. When I was growing up, a lot of my friends died from illegal abortions. So um, the many jobs that I worked on and everything, we gave money for it. We fought for it and everything. Because well. they were um, back, these backyards, places that they had to go have an abortion with a clothes hanger. Did uh, white people, at, white women at the time, have access to abortion, or no one did? No one did at that time. No one, no one did. You, could, you had to go to Cuba or another country to have access to abortions at that time and everything. And a lot of people died. And a lot of people now are dying because they're not able to, the doctors don't know what to do now mm -hmm. and everything. And this is so really disturbing. We didn't have, we didn't even have birth control pills. Wow. Marianne. Um, when you talk about access to abortion, you're thinking. I'm thinking about uh, health care. Um, and they were black doctors here. And how how is that experience receiving health care um, from your own community? Well, when I was here, they, we had a black doctor, Doctor Tony. He was very good. Mm -hmm. Very nice. He was very very good. Very nice. And where did he study? Do you know? Well, he's he's passed. He passed away. I mean, that's when I was young. Gotcha. Uh -huh. Would he be the individual that the community go, will call anytime they had an issue? Well, the doctor would come to the house. Was he a black doctor? Black doctor. Black Dr. Doctor. Tony, his yeah. name was. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he would visit. And all the community, I'm assuming, they sort of had his yes. contact uh -huh. specifically for mm -hmm. him. They had, oh, uh, here was Marshall's drugstore got rich behind the fact that, um, People that couldn't afford their medicine, they would have them give up part of their land wow. here. Uh huh. That's how they got rich and everything. What was your last memory of uh, Cook's Corner um, before you left? Baseball game. Just a baseball game. <laughs> baseball game. Just as we're like finishing up, I know you brought some documents and I was wondering like, is there anything, cause I know we touched on some of that, but is there this anything is you, not, want, um, you want to tell us about those? This is, um, this document here and everything, we just got it and everything. This is from the Commonwealth of Virginia and everything. And this is supposed to be Lindsay, um, he was hung and they have him here as having pneumonia and everything. This this was a false document. 
And they had my great grandmother sign it, but she couldn't read or write. So, you know, she understood this in the reading. Can you show the document to the camera? Just mm -hmm. I don't know why they sent me this one here. I'm going to scan the document. Um, and where did you get those from? My cousin, she sent them to me. She does, uh, she does a lot in uh, history and black history. She gets on. I have two. Warren Bagby, he's great with it. And uh, Wilhelmina Miller, she's great with it. And they get on that computer and they just stay on the computer until they find, you know. She went through the census, went down the census. Do you have any um, recollection of um, the KKK in Virginia? And oh, yeah, they're big time in over in King and Queen and here too. And did you have any, your family have any experiences with them? Not really. Well, when I was young here, this place was 95% black. Mm -hmm. So they stayed away from here, you know, and everything. But I know that Al Sharpton came um, here and the KK said that they were going to come down. You know, we said, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready for you and everything. And I remember... Um, It was something else with they they marched when um we used to go to the oyster festival, but the KK claim they let them march, so we didn't come to the oyster festival no more. And everything we decided that was it. We come down for the oyster festival, but we party in the house in the yard, everybody comes to the yard and everything. Because if you this is our money, you're gonna bring the KK Ku Klux Klan here and everything. And um the oyster festival when they have it. Black people have to fight to get a spot. They don't want them, you know, get a spot and everything. Can you talk a little bit about the Oyster Festival? And was that annually or? They have it every year. Uh huh. Still to this day? They still have it. They have to have it to keep the county going because they're broke. Gotcha. Uh huh. Now they're talking about having a little circus. Who's going to come here for a circus? <laughs> Is that because there's not a lot of oysters? Does that have anything to do with like production of oysters? I don't know what the, you know, I've heard that they were not doing well with, you know, with places here and everything. Okay. And are you enjoying yourself being back here? It's good in a way. And then, then it, I have to go so far to get anywhere, you know, and it, but it's good and everything. It's good to be around family. It's very good to be around family. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can you let us know, like, maybe prominent black uh, last names in this community? What are the, the names that have been building since the inception of this county? Um, the names of the black community that are still successful, that are still thriving in this region? They have um, names that are people that are still... There's the Hodges, the Beverly's, the Millers, the Tuckers, Salves. Bagby's and Morris's. Mm -hmm. They're still, these are family people that are, their families are back here and they're surviving, you know. Do you know what they do? What type of professions or? Well, uh, the Bellies mostly, they're in construction and everything. They're good builders and everything. Mm Anything else that you wanted to share with us today? No, that's about it. Um, one, well, uh, one question. Uh, with your, do you have children? No, I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what is one message that you would leave to the next generation behind? It seems like you've done a lot of great, amazing work. So thank you so much for doing all the work that you've done throughout the mm -hmm. years. What message would you leave to the next generation in this county for the, for the black community? Stand up for your rights. Fight for your rights. Okay. Well, with that said, I think, are there any further questions? We will conclude this interview then. Okay. okay. Thank you. So thank you. And thank you.